Hello and welcome back to the Tom FM channel. Today it's episode four of the San Marino experiment. We're trying to make San Marino the best footballing nation in the world. Last episode we got them up to 58th in 2046. We've had some good progress so far but hopefully today we'll start to push into that top 20. That's what I want to see in today's episode. Before we get on with today's episode though, I do want to say thank you very much. We have now reached 10,000 subscribers. That's all thanks to you guys watching, commenting, liking, and subscribing to the channel, mostly from these experiment videos. They've done really well recently. So thank you ever so much if you've subscribed, commented, liked, whatever. I really appreciate it. And we're now at 10,000 subscribers, which is pretty mental. I've got a fairly ambitious goal. I want to get to 100,000 subscribers. Now that is, I don't think that's even possible for a football manager channel, but we've got to try and see basically so thank you for your support so far i hope you stick around for more football manager stuff on my, on my channel and things like that hopefully we'll reach 100,000 within you know the next five years or so i'm going to give myself a long time to try and get there but hopefully we do it but in the meantime i just want to say thank you very much for 10,000 subscribers because that's a that's a very significant number i think that's that's a, that's a, it's, it's amazing so thank you right then on with today's episode we'll do a quick recap first of where we left off last time as i mentioned already we're in 2046 with san marino the 58th best team in the world we had some good performances we qualified for the european championships not once but twice and got to the quarter finals of the European Championship as well. Semi-finals, actually, of course. We lost to France in the semi-finals in 2044. So San Marino had a very good episode last time round. Really good movement. So hopefully we can progress on that as well. The San Marino Leagues were 66th in European Continental rankings, which is pretty good as well. Hopefully we see the San Marino Leagues climb to the top 50. Trey Penne have been in the group stages of the Europa League. Hopefully they start to get into the group stages of the Champions League. That'd be really good as well. And then finally, of course, we saw this guy last time, Lorenzo Benedetti in the San Marino under-21 side with 198 potential, but had just been released by his former club I put it to you guys I said to you last episode in the comments tell me where you want him to go and for the first thing the first hour or so the video coming up all the comments were saying move into a club with a right midfielder who play with a 4-4-2 sort of system because he's a right midfielder he needs to play in a system so I thought okay that's sensible I'll look for a team Inter Milan seemed like a very sensible option. They played a 4-4-2 and they already had a few other San Marino players in their squad. So it made sense to move him there. After I moved in there, saved the game and started to simulate a few more seasons into the future, I then went back to the comments and literally every single person said, move him to Ajax, move him to Ajax, move him to Ajax. It was too late at that point. So I do apologise. He's not gone to Ajax, although if I can go back and change it, I would do. But what's done is done. He's gone to Inter Milan instead. Ajax haven't got him, but hopefully he'll have a good career instead. So I'm going to jump four years in the future to 2050 and we're going to see what has happened in that stage. We're hopefully we're going to see some massive progress of San Marino. So join me in a second. And just like that, we are back in 2050. Four years, just like that, in a click of a finger. Right, San Marino. How have they got in the past four years? Uh, if we click on them here, San Marino, they've... Whoa, geez, they have climbed to 14th in the world rankings. Okay, because we left them off as 58th, didn't we? And they're now 14th. That's pretty impressive, okay? They must have done something pretty mental in the past four years to do that. We can see here already they're in European International League Division A, Group 2. So they're in the top tier of European football now in terms of the UEFA Nations League, which is pretty crazy. Let's go to the schedule then and go to 2046. That's where we were last time, of course. Uh, they were in Division B, of course, for the UEFA Nations League. Good results there against Spain and Austria, so they must have got promoted out of there. Next year, 2047, was European Championship qualifying, and they didn't actually lose a single game. They drew two games, once against Switzerland and once against Slovakia, but won the rest of the games, which is really impressive. So obviously qualified for the European Championships. We get to 2048. They're in the European Championships, win all their games in the... Oh my God, I've just seen it. They've bloody gone and won the European Championships. The 2048 European Championships has been won by San Marino. That is crazy. They beat Italy. In, okay, let's... let's Right. They beat Denmark, Slovakia and Holland in the group stages. Pretty decent. Portugal 3-1 in the second round. Get through on penalties against Belgium in the quarterfinals. Denmark, they beat them 1-0. And then in the final, Italy, they beat 2-0. That is quite fitting, to be fair, because obviously San Marino is a little country within Italy. It's a tiny country inside Italy. So that's absolutely crazy that, I mean, you can't believe that. that that's poetry, that is, as well, that it's San Marino versus Italy. And San Marino win it. What a result that is. That is actually crazy. I think that's amazing. We've, I didn't expect it. I didn't actually expect it to happen, especially because we came last time and they were 40, uh, 54th, weren't they, in the in the world rankings. And they've now gone and won a European Championships. So that's crazy. They didn't actually get promoted from Division B to Division A. Um, they played. They actually got stayed in Division B in the UEFA Nations League. So Norway and Scotland, 
They won most of the games, though, so they might have been promoted again. Next year, 2049 is World Cup qualifying year. Of course, they had to go to the Confederations Cup, which is crazy. Uh, lost in the semi-final to Brazil and then lost to Colombia in the third, fourth playoff. So fourth place in the Confederations Cup for San Marino, which is even more ridiculous. World Cup qualifying looked like it went pretty well too. So I think they probably qualified for a World Cup. If we go to 2050, um, oh my God, if they... Oh, I thought they'd won a World Cup then. They haven't quite won the... What a four-year period this has been for San Marino. So they qualified for the World Cup. Ace. Iran, USA, Denmark. Massive wins against them. The Dutch once again in the knockout stages. This time they beat them 1-0 in the in the third round of the World Cup. Ah, oh, of course, actually, at this stage of the game, the football manager will have reverted to, like it's like a 48-team World Cup system that they're trying to put forward in real life. I'm not sure if it's actually going to happen or not, but it's what they've done in, in, in football manager, obviously. So there's only three teams in each group, and then there's a second round, a third round, then a quarterfinal. So that's why it's got a second and third round there. But through the group stage against Iran and USA, then Denmark in the second round, Holland in the, fir in the third round, sorry, Germany in the World Cup quarterfinal, and then they lose on penalties to Argentina. That's agonising. Lose on penalties to Argentina in the semi-final of the World Cup, but then win the third, fourth playoff place against Serbia. Third in the World Cup, win the European Champions. What a four... End, end of series here. That's absolutely mental. And then to top it all off, they've just beaten England 1-0 in the top tier of the Nations League, which is pretty cool as well. What a four-year period for San Marino. What is this national side then? Benedetti is doing pretty well for himself. He's still at Inter Milan, so his move worked out very well for him, actually, because he's got 176 current ability. Still only, he's 25 years old, so might not actually reach that 198. He might not really improve much from 176, but that's still pretty good, I've got to say. A good few players down here looking with some good potential, good current ability. This guy's a new one, Zanotti, he's 19 years old. He's come in since the last regen intake uh, of the last four years he's got 175 potential on the left side of midfield so they must be playing a 4-4-2 San Marino with Benedetti on the on the right and Zanotti on the left he plays for San Jose where did he come from though in the first place Maratta and they went on a free to San Jose a lot of the San Marino players we've seen have gone to the USA which is a bit of a I'm not sure that's a weird one or not but they've it's worked out well for them there's one or two young players here but actually a majority of his side do look to be, if we sort it by age instead, a lot of them are over the age of 23. Not many young players coming in, so perhaps this really was the golden generation. Perhaps we are seeing the very height of what San Marino can do, and it might drop down a little bit from the future if they don't get any more good regions coming through. That, though, is absolutely incredible. I'm so impressed with that. Trey Penne, how have they done in the in the league, of course? We go to the San Marino league. Past few years, it's been won by Folgor, actually, mostly, and then uh, Trey Penne winning it in this past season gone by, but they're still 66th in, competent, in continental competition rankings, that is. They were as high as 64th, but they've not really moved at all, San Marino, still staying behind League Two. So, although the San Marino national side has done absolutely amazing, the domestic league not really improved, which to me suggests that none of these sides have actually got anywhere in Europe, because if they had got to the group stages, I think we'd see the San Marino league jumping into the top 50. So, I'm not going to check because I don't think they'll have done anything. But that, though, was an absolutely incredible four-year period. I really cannot believe that. That is that is actually crazy. Before we go forward as well, just want to check as well because it's been mentioned to me in the comments section that we should look for players with a second nationality up here, as you can see, of San Marino and if they're playing for Italy. And actually, there looks to be some really good players who have got a second nationality of San Marino. So this guy, for example, Gabriel Mariotti or whatever he's called, where did he start out? He started out at Trey Penny in San Marino, but obviously went to Inter Milan pretty quickly and seems to have changed allegiances. How good is he actually? I didn't even think about this, to be fair, until the comments mentioned it. 194 potential abilities. So San Marino are actually probably missing out on quite a few good players who are switching to Italian nationality. This player started out at La Ferita, for example, and then switched to Italian clubs and then went for the Italian nationality instead. So imagine if these players hadn't changed nationality to Italy... They actually, oh, San Marino could have had such an amazing national side. This guy also looks pretty good. He started out at Folgor. What's his current ability, potential ability? 180 potential ability, 180 current ability. Fair play, okay. A few players actually have been swapping nationalities. This is a quite, probably should have looked at this earlier on if we're honest with ourselves actually. Uh, but I forgot last episode and you guys have mentioned it in the comment section. So we're looking at it now, but this is actually quite significant. If these players had actually stayed at San Marino... They could have won a World Cup, I reckon. They probably would have won a World Cup. Hopefully, we'll see them win a World Cup in the next four years, though. I'm so excited for this next four-year cycle. So, 
on to 2054. And just like that, we are back in 2054 now. So San Marino were 14th in the world rankings last time. Where are they now? I'm so excited to see this. They are, they're 10th in the world rankings. Okay. If it is possible, they actually have improved, which is absolutely crazy. Up to 10th in world rankings, uh, still in that top flight of European football in the UEFA Nations League Division A, playing Serbia at the moment. Right. Let's look at the schedule then. I want to see 2050, obviously. Um, what's going on here with the dates? Let's look at the dates. Right, dates in the proper order. 2050, that's their World Cup run. Looks pretty decent in Division A of the UEFA Nations League. Not getting so many wins there, but I think they might have avoided relegation from it. Into 2051, it's European qualifying for the European Championships. And they lost the one game to Austria, but other than that, looks like they won all their games. So another European Championships on the horizon for San Marino to defend their title. 2052 is the year, and actually, they don't get out the group stage. The defending champions... Lose, probably surprisingly, to Scotland. Lose to England, but beat the Czech Republic. But that wasn't enough to go through. So, defending champions knocked out. I reckon that means they've had a good World Cup because they wouldn't, they're they now 10th in the world rankings. They did actually get relegated from uh, Division A of the UEFA Nations League in Division B this time, but wins against Slo Slovenia and Austria. Probably means they are promoted again to Division A. Uh, we know they are, actually. We saw it earlier because they were playing in Serbia, weren't they? 2053 is World Cup qualification. Looks like they won every single game in qualification, actually. Lost a friendly to Brazil and, and drew with France, but all the qualification games and a few more friendlies they won. So into the World Cup year, 2054, how have they done? World Cup group stages, Japan and New Zealand out the way. Second round, Congo beat them. Paraguay in the third round, penalties. Quarter final win against Belgium, but losing the semi-finals to England 1-0 and then beat Germany for the third place playoff. So two World Cups in a row, San Marino have come third. That's apps. It's so frustrating as well that they've missed out on the final hurdle pretty much to get to the final. But to say that they've come third in two World Cups is absolutely crazy. Here they are, third in two World Cups. Uh, England, have, England have won one and come second in another two. So England have really dominated, as of Argentina, actually. Argentina have won four World Cups since this experiment started. Mexico second a few times. Interesting, to be fair. Colombia even won a World Cup as well interesting what is most impressive though of course is San Marino coming third twice in a row if only they could have got to a final that would have been amazing so they must still have most of these good players then let's have a look at the, the squad potential ability Benedetti is still there playing for actually to be fair although he's was 25 years old 100, 170 odd current ability he has actually improved he's up to 193 now playing for Real Madrid to be fair that is very impressive okay He's played very well for Real Madrid as well after moving for £66 million from Inter Milan. They are, there are some very good players there still. This guy looks good. He looks like he's come through in recent years. Bonifazi, he's 20 years old, uh, currently plays in the midfield centre for Salzburg and has 184 potential ability. So that's good to see another young player come through. But other than him, I don't think there's any more good young players that have come through to the first team at least. If we look at the under-21 squad... There's a few players here with some potential, but nothing exciting. Nothing as exciting as Benedetti from last time. Under-20 squad, nothing there. And under-19 squad, I don't think much is going to be there either, which there isn't. So the golden age for San Marino might be starting to run out now, which is a shame, to be fair. Hopefully, they will hold on. The San Marino League is up to 57th now, which is good. So maybe Trey Penne, half they've won it a few seasons in a row, uh, along with Facento. Looks like they might have got European football at some point in the group stages. Knocked out this season, obviously, uh, in the European. Every time they get knocked out in that fourth qualifying round, it's so unfortunate for them. Uh, the season before that, only the first place round. The season before that, actually not getting past the first qualifying round. Uh, third, fourth qualifying round again there in the 2052-53 season and then actually did get to the group stages in the 51-52 season uh, didn't get past it though they did win a few games though they beat let's actually make this a bit easier to see shall we they beat bait twice actually but lost to Roma and Partizan so didn't get through the group stage but it's, it's improvement we're starting to get there with the national with the domestic side sorry 2050-51 season again they're also in the group stage there with Milan Galatasaray and Bait drawing both those games to Bait in that season but obviously the season we've just seen they beat them twice so that's good progress for Tano then how do they get on they must have done something good in Europe to be fair to be winning the league and things like that and, and getting the the ranking up for the, for the nation knocked out the fourth qualifying round last season as as is pretty standard for San Marino sides and the season before that and the season before that and then nothing the season before there so it's it's a it's a shame really isn't it 
It's a shame, but they are starting. It's just imagine if these teams actually won the fourth qualifying round. We'd have so many San Marino sides in the Europa League, and they actually might do quite well in it. So it's a bit of a shame, but hopefully they'll get there. We're going to go one more four-year cycle in the future then. Hopefully, this is going to be it. Hopefully, they're going to win a World Cup. If they do, that's going to be probably experiment over. But if they don't win a World Cup, I reckon we go for one more episode just to try and... Re and we'll boost everything. Reputation, money, facilities. We'll do everything to really try and win a World Cup for San Marino. And if we can't do it, then I think by... Because next episode, will be we'll get to 2070. By that stage, if they haven't won one and haven't got to number one in the world rankings, then I think... It's probably game over. And here we are for the final four-year jump into the episode, up to 2058 now. Let's find San Marino once again. How are they getting on? They're still in top tier of the Nations League, which is pretty good. So hopefully that's going to be a good sign. But they have dropped down to 23rd, which is slightly concerning because they were 10th last time. And they have dropped down. They were as high as 10th and have dropped over the past four years, which isn't too promising. So another episode is on the cards by looks of things. But hopefully I am wrong. So to finish off 2054, looks like they got relegated from Division A of the UEFA Nations League after losses to Serbia and the Dutch, which is a bit of a shame. 2055 is European qualification time and it's not been quite as strong as it has been in recent years, losing even to Norway and drawing to Georgia and, and losing to Slovenia. So that's not particularly good. They might not have actually qualified for the European Championships. They only get through to it in the, in, in the playoffs, as you can see here but don't get past the group stage again. So after winning it, they have been knocked out of two group stages in a row. This time, not even winning a game there. So that's frustrating. They did get relegated to Division B of the UEFA Nations League, but it looks like they have been promoted after wins over Poland and Sweden. 2057 is World Cup qualification year. Not a single loss that year, but lots of draws. That I, I don't think that's going to be enough. I don't think that's going to be enough to qualify for the World Cup. And if we go, they, it wasn't. It wasn't good enough to qualify for the World Cup. So the past four years for San Marino, ah, oh, that's been a bit of a shame. It had, they have been poor, but those previous eight years before this, that was the golden time for San Marino football. If we look at the squad now, Benedetti's not there anymore, obviously. He must have retired at this stage. Uh, and to be fair, there's a few decent players. If we search it by current ability, there's only one player over 160 current ability. And that's probably why we're seeing then Samri not doing quite so well in international competitions, which is a shame. The golden generation looks like it might be over. So we will do one more episode and we're going to put absolutely everything into the reputation, into the into the money, into the facilities, everything to try and get something out of this. Uh, let's have a quick look at the youth squads. Any good players coming through? Potential ability, 167, 162. They're the best players there. Under 20 squad, 148 potential. That's the best one. That's not too good. Under 19 squad, uh, it's, oh, it's not looking amazing out there with only 99 potential ability. So it could be a tough few years for San Marino coming up. We need to invest heavily for next episode because next episode, I think it's going to be the last one. We've got to do something. The San Marino League sort of stayed stagnant. 57th in continental competition rankings. Was as high as 52nd at one point, but has dropped down to 57th. So I don't think any sides are going to be doing particularly well, which is a oh, that is frustrating. Again, having a quick look at this second nationality here, looks like quite a few players have switched to Italy or even Argentina. A few Argentinian uh, players there, actually, which is interesting. But this guy, actually, we looked at him last time, wasn't it? This is Yeah, we looked at this guy before. Playing at Bayern Munich and then Man City, doing very well for himself, but playing for Italy rather than San Marino. Uh, we saw Stoffoli last time as well. So actually, it's not like many new young players have come through that are valued very highly. But I looked at things, actually, it just was that golden generation because even those players that have switched were from that golden generation era because those players that were really good in that golden generation are about 30 plus into retirement age. So there just was a really good eight years and all those players are now gone and that's a shame because they could have won a world cup in that time but they came third twice so what we are going to do what i'm going to do in between episodes is just boost everything it's the final push the last thing we have to do we have to really get something out of this now fingers crossed we get a result we have to get some really good players coming through i want to see him get to the more in the world rankings i want to see him win a world cup I believe it's going to happen. So I think the final episode for this experiment is going to come out on Wednesday at 8pm. So make sure you tune in for that one. 
hopefully we're going to see some absolute magic, but I can't promise anything. It's down to the mercy of the game. Hopefully it all works out for the best. So a slightly disappointing end to it, but what an incredible first eight years of this episode. That was, at, I mean, they won a European Championship and came third in two World Cups. That is really impressive. So if you've enjoyed today's video, please do drop a like on it for me and subscribe to the channel if you're new around here. There'll be a subscribe button on the screen right now and then you've got a choice of two videos to watch next. You can watch another experiment or you can go and watch the Lincoln Loco series that I keep banging on about, but it is a really good series. It's really hotting up now as well. We're having a really good year in the championship. So join us for that. I'll see you in one of these videos. Goodbye.